Hello friends, I discovered a new method for finding an endless inspiration source for my drawings, which I will be sharing with you today. As some of you might already know, earlier this year I started a drawing challenge which consists of drawing 100 spirits for 100 days every day. So most important question was how to generate new ideas for drawing different things every single day. And I found out that I should invent a method in order to succeed this challenge, which I will be sharing with you in this video. So far I'm right in the middle of this challenge and I have already posted 54 shorts that you can find on my YouTube channel, showing how I create new characters every day in a speed drawing format. I also shared some colored drawings on my Instagram account. By the way, you can subscribe there as well if you want to support me. I have only 47 wonderful followers. Oh, it's so depressing. But let's jump straight in the video. Who are the spirits? So first of all, why the hell am I talking about spirits? Who the spirits are and how this can be relevant as an inspiration tool. According to Britannica Dictionary, spirit is a force within a person that is believed to give the body life, energy and power. In Western culture, the spirit is indistinguishable from human soul, which doesn't have a very big variety of representation in visual arts, i.e. it usually looks like a ghost or a translucent essence separating from human physical body when it dies. On the other hand, in Asian culture, and more particularly in Japan, spirits have a whole different significance and importance. Shinto or Shintoism is an indigenous Japanese religion that relies essentially on venerating spirits. According to Shintoist beliefs, there are 8 million gods called kami that can be living forces of natural elements, objects, materials and basically almost everything on earth. As for spirits, they may be seen as a derivative concept from Komi and compose a whole system of beliefs and philosophies in its own. In a contemporary interpretation, it is believed that every object is alive and has its own character, memory and feelings. How the Shintoist beliefs can become a creation tool for artists. So my tiny little method consists of few simple steps. First of all, I randomly draw very few simple lines. Sometimes these lines intersect, sometimes not. Sometimes they are straight and sometimes they are bent. My only requirement for them is to be symmetrical, but you can of course experiment with it as well. The second step is finding where to put a pair of eyes. So I proceed with drawing big and expressive eyes on each side of the lines, on the left and on the right. Starting from this moment, the drawing already becomes alive. And if at any moment this was supposed to become a face, this would be rather an unusual face to say the least. But this is what I personally like to create in my art practice, something funny and whimsical at the same time. So what I do is that I try to listen to their facial expression and to continue with intuitively adding elements that may correspond to their characters. I will make another video where I will be talking more in details about how to draw spirits, but let's see why this simple method can be useful for artists. Why using spirits in art without actually worshipping them? There are numerous examples of using more or less hidden face features in a painting. It starts with famous anthropomorphic landscapes made by different painters such as Wenceslas Holler or Matthäus Marian the Elder starting from 16th century, where landscapes look like a human face. It's followed by avant-garde painters such as Salvador Dali in 20th century where faces are composed with different objects and characters. But there are examples of more abstract paintings, which I personally prefer, where it is less evident to actually find a face. Although once seen, it cannot be unseen. Anyway, possibilities are absolutely limitless when it comes to seeing a face in something that is not an actual face. Overall, we can definitely say that this method comes with some potential advantages. Advantages of using this method. Dude, you make weird drawings every day, so what's there so special about it? Well, for some people it might look ordinary or completely uninteresting, but wait. When you are a visual creator, illustrator, painter, sculptor, ceramist, etc., haven't you already struggled with generating new ideas every time you want to create something new? So first advantage is that you don't need to wait for inspiration to come. You just start drawing some lines and the rest will eventually follow. Second, as I just said, possibilities are limitless, so you might have enough ideas for the rest of your artistic life. Third, this method doesn't stop at drawing funny characters, it can actually help you to develop a narrative around it. For example, the pine cone spirit finds itself in a permanent state of falling from a pine tree, the reflection spirit doesn't reflect what it doesn't like, and the pocket spirit can accidentally swallow your keys or your wallet. 
Again, possibilities of generating new narratives are endless. Anyway guys, in my future videos I will be sharing with you more tips on what I learned from this funny spirit drawing challenge as well as many other ideas for making drawings and becoming a visual creator. So stay tuned, subscribe to my channel and activate notifications so I can keep you updated about this journey. That's it, have a wonderful summer, bye bye!